So we just went camping the other day. And it got us thinking about what makes a good game to take camping. So we, we put together a list of pros and cons for games on whether or not to bring them camping. Like things that make a game likely you would pick to take you camping because it's, a, it's, a, it's got the right attributes. Or games that, you know, if it has any of these attributes, you should just avoid. So I guess this is sort of like a recommendation video. Would you, basically? Uh, I would think more of like a guideline. Guideline. Okay. So it's a guideline video. We're, we're giving you guidelines of what we think would make a good game to take with you if you go camping. Uh, this is uh, specifically car camping. Uh, if you're going backpacking and literally walking from site to site, you're going to specifically want just travel games, just tiny games. Uh, little things you can throw in the backpack and don't weigh very much. But for car camping, um, there's a little more variety and we're going to go over them. So uh, would you like to start with uh, the first and do you want to do... You wanna do Positives first, like game, things that would make you want to bring a game, or negatives first. I like negatives. Okay, so why don't you <laughs> why don't you give us our first negative then? Okay, so you don't want to bring a game that has a lot of paper money. Um, even if you're like, oh, I can weigh it down, like someone is not going to weigh down their money properly, it's going to blow away. And this kind of goes with general paper components also like if, if your game requires sheets of paper uh or has sheets of paper for reference instead of like you know a dense card stock you know quick reference these things are issues if, if you have to have paper out on the table and you have to have a lot of paper out on the table like you know you can get away with a little bit if you have like a, a quick reference sheet on each side of the table and you're weighing it down with something but if you have a lot of paper that is definitely definitely something to avoid mm -hmm. um why don't we switch over to then the positive of weighty pieces. Generally speaking, you want all the pieces of the game to be kind of weighty, kind of substantial, so that they're not going to be blown around. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, that's kind of, you know, it's the antithesis of the negative of the, of the paper money or lots of paper components, but um, it, it doesn't really go without saying. I mean, you know, you, you can have a game that doesn't have a lot of paper components, but has a lot of very light components, things that still would be pushed around by the wind. Uh, so would you, uh, would you agree? Yeah. Agree with that? All right, so give us our next negative. Uh, lots of cards. Similar reasons. Um, you know, if you have a lot of cards spread on the table, a little bit of wind can move a light card very far, very fast. <laughs> it's very true. It's very true. Um, now... Let me, let me, um, I don't really have anything to add to that. So I think I'm just going to jump into a positive, a thing that would make you want to bring a game. Uh, uh, you want small footprint games. Uh, the reason for this is most campsites you go to are just going to have like a picnic table. This is pretty standard. It's pretty normal. Now, granted, they're not tiny. 
They're normal size picnic tables, but really big footprint games could be an issue. Uh, I'm talking about like, you know, big like war games or big area control games. These things are not the right kind of game to bring. They might be too big for the table. Um, you want something smaller. It's not going to take up a lot of space. Did you have anything you want to add to that? Um, just, I just wanted to add that also the reason why you don't want large footprint games is because if you need to clear it up quickly because, you know, it's starting to rain or, you know, whatever reason that there's many reasons why in the middle of the wilderness, mm -hmm. you would need to pack up a game quickly. You don't want to have to be packing up all these different components, you know? Fair enough. That's fair enough. So why don't you give us our next negative? Um, very long and very involved games are um, not going to do well because, uh, you know, you do have to stop and do stuff. You have to make a fire to, to, to cook your food and that might take a while sometimes the fire starts right away sometimes there's issues and it takes like an hour to start a damn fire yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you need to you need games that you can either like pause or you know are not going to take very long i thoroughly agree which is why my next positive we're throwing out here i'm going to jump ahead to a positive that really mirrors that one really well easy to pick up and play games um this is uh, very good for um, the reverse of what you were saying. So uh, games that are just very easy to teach, very easy to just sort of learn the rules in five minutes, easy to pick up and play. You can play in between meals, between doing other things. Because, I mean, when you go camping, you can play a lot of board games, but it's not going to be the only thing you're doing. You are doing lots of other stuff, so definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you also don't want a game that is in a large box and has lots of components because you need to find a you know place in your car to pack it and um boxes generally don't pack well well big boxes yeah. I mean, you, small boxes or small to medium-sized boxes could be okay if you bring one medium-sized box game but big box games like, you know, we're, we're talking like the big rectangles. Yeah. Those things you're going to have trouble fitting in along with all of your other camping. Because you, you, you put in all your bulky stuff in the car. Mm. And then in the nooks and crannies, you stick like what, Smaller games. whatever yeah. you can. You, yeah. you stick like backpacks and like whatever can fit pretty much anywhere. Um, and then if you have a big like rectangle, big rectangle to fit somewhere... You don't want to put it under under heavy stuff because you want the heavy stuff to go in first. And then it's not, you don't want to block your windows. It's just easier to pick smaller games. And then also you touched on the lots of components and the ease of cleaning them up. Uh, but we have this in here also with the large box. Uh, lots of components. Again, uh, if you have a ton of components, things are going to fall off the table onto the ground. Uh, lots of components means it'll take a long time to clean up. Mm -hmm. um, lots of components are just very fiddly when you're out in the wilderness in on at a at a picnic table playing a game. It can be an issue. You want you I mean a, you can have a fair number of components as long as they are weighty, uh, but you don't want a ton of components. You don't want to have a ludicrous number of components. Uh, and then to mirror your large box uh, being a bad thing is a positive note. Travel games, travel games often come in pouches or bags. Uh, makes them really easy to pack. They're fairly light. Uh, travel games often have very durable components. Uh, often most of their components and boards are plastic and therefore are weather resistant. You know, they, they could get a little water on them. It's not going to hurt them. Uh, most of the games we brought with us were, were, were basically waterproof. Yeah. Um, so, you know, not all of them, but they uh, most of them actually kind of were. If they got a little water on them. It's not going to hurt them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the reverse of your large box box and lots of components being a bad thing is mm -hmm. uh travel games with durable components mm -hmm. do, do we miss anything i don't think so 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 that's it uh let us know down in the comments below do you have any other things that you think are really big you know um positives that you look for in a game to take with you camping or negatives things you would definitely avoid when picking games to bring with you camping let us know down below what are your big ups and big downs for board games to take camping and if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see us do more like this be sure to give it a like share it on all forms of social media and if you haven't already please subscribe to the board game captain that's captain spelled a k on youtube and until next time game, game on, on.